In this video, we're gonna dive deep on the new 3D Inflate tool within Illustrator. You might have seen this online where you can turn something into kind of like a really hyper-realistic bubble. Um, you can make like bubble letters, for example. And I'm actually gonna use our DKNG initials as an example. So I'd recommend starting off with something that looks a little bit more kind of bubbly in shape because it actually will help. Um, so right here I have actual live text and you can see that um, it's not expanded, which is gonna give us a lot more flexibility in the future. And I'm gonna have it selected and go into Effect, 3D Materials, and then go into Inflate. And what happens is you're gonna get a couple default settings. Um, it adds some light source, it adds some bubbling, and you can see that um, some of the things that you can change are the rotation. I'm gonna give this a little bit more of an interesting rotation, so it's like leaning backwards, uh, I'm gonna have it kind of change the y-axis a little bit. I'm gonna just kind of keep the z-axis uh, minimal at this point. And you can also change the depth, for example. You can make um, the letters really thick. Um, I'm gonna keep those a bit more standard. The volume at which this inflate can actually be inflated is something you can adjust. So um, for the sake of kind of showing the full nature of the capabilities of inflate, I'm gonna just go full percent. And then another interesting thing you can do is play around with inflating both sides. So I'm gonna click on this button and to show you what that looks like, I'm just gonna spin around the Y axis and you can see that both sides of the uh, text is fully inflated. So I think that this looks pretty good so far, but I'm also gonna play around with materials. Uh, this is where you can add texture. Let's say I want it to look uh, a little bit more texturized, like it's painted with white paint or it's got a wood texture, for example. Um, but for the sake of this uh, lesson, I'm just gonna play around with the base materials and just show how robust those are. And you can see that in the base properties of this, you have a lot more options. So metallic is something you can really bring up and it adds a lot more shininess and reflection to the actual text. And then roughness is something you can play around with as well. So if you kind of want more of a satin or matte finish, you can go uh, higher up. If you want it to be a little bit more uh, metallic, you can go lower. And then lighting is something you can play around with as well. So once you click on lighting, you can actually change your light source. Let's say I'm gonna bring in uh, a little bit of light to the left here, and I'm gonna bring the intensity up so it's even brighter. Now it's starting to really look like bubble letters, which is pretty cool. Um, and then another thing you can play around with is the actual shadows. So this also by default is not clicked, but I'm gonna turn it on and you can see what happens. Basically it's giving shadow to the actual elements that were created and the shadow bounds, if you bring that up, will allow you to see the full shadow. The distance at uh, which that shadow is casting is something you can also adjust. Um, and beyond that, this is not fully rendered yet too. So this is just like the preview version of all, everything we're talking about. Once you click on this top right button, you're rendering with ray tracing, and this is where the hyperrealism really settles in. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and see where we're at. And you can see that something really interesting happened. It's still live text, but we're getting a whole bunch more detail involved here. Now, it doesn't stop there. Once I click out of that preview area, I can make some micro adjustments. Let's say in the materials area, I want roughening to go all the way down so it's as shiny as possible, and I want metallic all the way up so that's super shiny. And I'm gonna take a look again at rendering it and see if that makes any difference. Now we're getting it to look really like just metallic letters, and this is getting really interesting. Now, again, there's other things that you can do to actually adjust this. So I'm gonna go in and make a couple micro adjustments as well. Uh, I'm gonna bring roughness up a little bit so it's not quite as dark, somewhere in between. I'm gonna go into lighting, and let's say I want to um, bring the softness of these shadows up a little bit. And this whole process is just kind of like a back and forth, kind of figuring out like the perfect happy medium. But the trick is to make the adjustments in the preview mode. So this to me looks great. Um, but I'm gonna go even further. I'm actually gonna change the background color and right now I have it set to white, but let's say I wanna make it, let's say like a pink color, a little bit more intense. I can also adjust the text itself, the color. So let's say I want to make the text a little bit more interesting, like yellow. 
And right now I have it fully rendered, so it might take a couple seconds. And just by a couple clicks, um, we're getting a lot more going on. Now, one thing I wanna mention too, just one additional tip is that you can add more light source to this if you wish. Uh, I'm gonna turn off preview just to show this a little bit faster. I'm gonna add an additional light source. Right now we just have white kind of coming in from the top left. Uh, this little plus add light button, I'm gonna click. And I'm gonna change it to this pink color that's similar to our background. And I'm gonna change where that's coming from, maybe near the base. And what this is gonna do for me is kind of show that this reflection is actually having some sort of a relationship with the background. And it's gonna make things look hopefully really, really uh, realistic. So I'm gonna go ahead and render and see what that looks like. Now we're getting something that's fully rendered and it's taking into account the background color a little bit and it looks hyper realistic. And what's really cool is that this text is still live. So I can go back to my preview mode and even change the text. Let's say instead of it saying DKNG, I'm gonna go ahead and just spell out my name and then go into rendering one more time. And it keeps all the same effects that we created, but I can change the text on the fly. What's really interesting is that this text being live and also having this hyper-realistic look can happen in the same world. You can actually change the text on the fly. You don't have to expand anything. And in the process, still have something that's fully rendered. So it gives you complete editability and you can basically change anything on the fly.